What made me first suspect Joe was that he knew more than any innocent person should have known. I suspected Irene the moment I heard the fireman's testimony. The apparently unimportant fact. I suspected, I suspected, I suspected the lady. I suspected the postman after he testified. I suspected. I suspected. I suspected. I suspected. I suspected. Listen to radio's newest, most interesting, and thrilling program, Suspicion. Somewhere in the drama about to be presented is a seemingly unimportant fact. A hidden clue that first casts suspicion on the ultimate culprit. Listen regularly to this thrilling series. Test your powers of observation and deduction and find the hidden clue. It may be a single line, a sound, perhaps a complete scene. All names and characters depicted in this story are fictitious. Any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. In the story we presented last time in this series, End of the Trail... Do you remember this scene? In the ranch house of the Double C, Bill Clark tells how his brother Ed committed suicide. He's going to fight it out. But maybe the the queer spell wore off. I kind of think he did, and he realized what he'd done. Because all of a sudden, he picked up the rifle, put it against his forehead, and shot himself. You haven't touched anything, have you? No, not a thing. The rifle's across his lap, just where it fell. That was the hidden clue, ladies and gentlemen. Had Ed Clark killed himself, as Bill described it, the rifle would have fallen to the floor. It would not have fallen across his lap. Now we present Murder on Sunday. London, England. Early one Sunday evening in May, as Alfred Hawkins prepares to close the old-fashioned office building in Widow Lane, where he is employed as porter and watchman, now, don't you let no one in, Clara Bell. It's closing time, it is. Has Mr. Bloomfield left yet? I think he must have. He don't usually stay this late. Leastwise, not on Sundays. He must have let himself off the side entrance. I hope he locked it after him. Well, you'd best look in his office just the time, now. Well, I suppose you're right. But if he was on the fifth floor instead of the second, he could stay the night for all of me. Alfred, hurry now. Oh, I am. Climb the stairs. Mr. Bloomfield. Mr. Bloomfield! Mr. Bloomfield! I guess he must have left. Mr. Bloomfield, it's closing time, it is. Mr. Bloomfield! I didn't see you leave, I didn't. I guess I'd better look, otherwise, Clarabelle would have to keep saying I shed him. Mr. Bloomfield! Mr. Bloomfield! It's closing time. Mr. Bloomfield, sir! Oh, was sleep, eh? I was sorry to wake you like this, sir, but... Blimey. Mr. Bloomfield, speak to me, sir. Blimey, go. Hello? Davis speaking. What's that? Alexander Bloomfield of Bloomfield and Reynolds, eh? Yes, I know him. I've placed a few bets with him myself. Widow Lane's just a few blocks from here. Yes, I'll go there at once. No, I'll handle the case. You see, I've been expecting something like this to happen for quite some time. Are you from Scotland Yard, sir? Yes, I'm Chief Inspector Davis. His body's upstairs, it is, Mr. Davis. Not not this way, sir. Well, just a moment, Hawkins. Oh, good evening, Mr. Hawkins. Good evening, is it? Alfred, don't you open your big mouth before we see our solicitor. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of, Mrs. Hawkins. I'm sure you and your husband are entirely innocent. <laughs> Me and Alfred was together all day in the office here. Quite so. Now, before examining Mr. Bloomfield's office, I'd like to hear your story. Well, I knocks on his door a few times like this. I does, and then I says to myself that I'd better make sure he ain't in. 
So I takes out my keys, unlocks his door, calling his name all the time. And I walks in. I see him sitting at his desk, and his head in his hands. First I think he's sleeping. Then I see that he ain't, that, that he's murdered. You knew it was murder right away, eh? Well, aside from his head being based in, sir, Mr. Bloomfield was a bookie what didn't like paying his losses. I tells him just the other day that folks like to get their winnings right away, that does. And if he don't pay up at once, well, sometimes something's liable to happen to him. Of course, I was only joking. Uh, yes, but... yes, of course. Did he come here often on Sundays? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh. Did he have many callers today? Oh, he had three, Mr. Chief Inspector. Oh. Me and Alfred seen him. His partner, Mr. Arthur Reynolds, he come down for about an half an hour this morning. I see. The others, they come this afternoon. One was uh, Miss Alice Crandall. Just a bit after she gets here, she leaves. And then Mr. Hampton, he comes, but he goes most as soon as he gets here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hawkins. And when the coroner's men arrive, send them upstairs, please. All right, lead the way, Hawkins. Is there a second entrance to this building? Yes, sir, but it's always locked on Sundays, Mr. Dylas. Yeah, of course. Here, this room. Have you touched anything? Uh, no, sir. Well, for your sake, Hawkins, I hope you didn't. You don't look like a murderer, but looks can be quite deceiving, can't they? I say, Peter, what do you make of this case? Well, it has me stumped, Mr. Davis. There were three suspects. And right, so. And robbery was not the motive. Well, hardly. Not with all that money in Bloomfield's wallet and his pockets hadn't been gone through. Well, perhaps we can patch the stories of our suspects into some kind of motive. Oh, I believe it's the next house. Well, this is number 57, sir. That's yeah, the place, then. Now, I don't expect to be more than a few minutes. But if I'm not back pretty soon, report to the yard. Yes, sir. Yes, what is it? Are you Anthony Hampton? Yes. Well, I'm Chief Inspector Davis of Scotland Yard. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, come in, won't you? Thanks. Uh, right in here. Uh, will you excuse me for a moment? I, I was talking to my employer on the telephone. Where's the phone, Mr. Hampton? Right here. No. Stop at the next phone station and we'll report to the yard. There's no use looking for him any further. I suppose not, Mr. Davis, but... Uh, but there he is. Where? The second car down the block. The left mud guard is almost torn off. Yes, sir, that's Hampton's car, all right. Well, pull up alongside and force him to the curb. Right. Pull over to the curb, Hampton. All right. All right, don't shoot. I'll stop. Don't shoot. I'll confess. I'll confess, Mr. Davis. That's nice of you. Mr. Greenlaw told you all about it, didn't he? And for the last six months, I've been expecting it every day. I knew Mr. Greenlaw was going to personally examine the books, and then he'd know how much I'd been taking. So you're a thief, too, eh? Yes, I've been steep. What do you mean, I'm a thief, too? I never did anything else. Well, I never heard of you, Mr. Greenlaw, Hampton. You, you know... Well, then what are you arresting me for? For murder, Hampton. For the murder of Alexander Bloomfield. Anything you say may be used against you. Come on, now, get out. We're going to Scotland Yard. But that isn't what happened at all, Mr. Davis. No? No. I did see Bloomfield this afternoon at his office. Last week, I... I bet on a long shot, and I won. 500 pounds. I know that Mr. Greenlaw was going to find out about me, and... With the 500 pounds, I was going to leave England. I see. But Bloomfield kept putting me off. He said he and Mr. Reynolds had been rather badly hit and they didn't have the money. So in a moment of anger, you snatched up the bronze paperweight and bashed in his head. And then you went out, locked the door behind no, you. No, no, I didn't. You can't prove I did because no Peters. one... Peters. Yes, sir. Turn left at the next street and go to 1158 Beamer Road. If you're innocent, Hampton, here's your chance to prove it. Of course 
I'll cooperate with you, Mr. Davis. Now, Hampton, I want you to wear these handcuffs and act guilty. Oh, I say, Mr. Davis, is this a trap? Yes, but not for you, unless I'm greatly mistaken. Come on. Peters, don't let anyone leave this house. No one will get out this time, sir. Remember, Hampton, act guilty. Yes, sir. You work with me, and I'll do all I can to fix things up with Greenlaw. Shh. Someone's coming. Yes? Yeah. Oh, good evening, Davis. Hello, Reynolds. Mind if we come in for a minute? Hello, Paul. After you, Hampton. He's one of your clients, Randall. Yes, I've seen him at the office a few times. But uh, why the handcuffs? Bloomfield was murdered a few hours ago. Alex was... I say, Davis, if this is a joke, you have a remarkable sense of humor. It's no joke. But Alex was... Uh, Hampton killed him, eh? I can't say definitely, but he's under arrest. He was the last person known to see Bloomfield. Well, I didn't kill him, Mr. Davis. He was very much alive when I left. You'll be given a fair trial, Hampton. There's a point I think you can clear up, Reynolds. Oh, boy, I'll be glad to. Hampton claims that you and Bloomfield owed him 500 pounds. Is that right? Well, I can find out in just a moment. I I have a duplicate set of books in my desk here. Now, do you mind if I look through the books? Not at all. Everything's open and above board, Davis. Reynolds, you're lying. You killed... Look, on the floor, Hampton. Try again, Reynolds. You win, Davis. Toss your gun away. Switch on the lights, Hampton. All right. Well, uh, oh. Thanks, Hampton. Uh, I appreciate your help. Get me to a hospital. You'll live for a long time yet, Reynolds. Long enough to be executed. Oh, you think you're pretty smart, eh, Davis? Yeah, don't you? However, Reynolds, if you had been smart, you never would have been caught. You see, I couldn't have proved a thing against you. I only suspected you. But thanks for giving yourself away. Deciding to plead guilty and beg the mercy of the court, Arthur Reynolds confessed his crime to Chief Inspector Clark Davis. Late right in the afternoon, about five, I returned, went into the side entrance and killed him. My motive was jealousy. I'd introduced Bloomfield to Miss Alice Crendell, whom I'd hoped to marry. But Bloomfield did all he could to take her away from me and ultimately succeeded. You see, really quite an ordinary case after all, Reynolds. I still don't see why you suspected me, Davis. After all, anyone could have entered the building through the second door. Precisely. And that's why the fact that two other persons saw him after you did meant nothing. However, the one fact which made me suspect you was... Ladies and gentlemen, did you discover the hidden clue that caused Chief Inspector Davis to suspect Arthur Reynolds? Write into this station and tell us the hidden clue you found. And to check your powers of observation and deduction, listen for the correct hidden clue in this story the next time we present... Suspicion! Suspicion!